Welcome boys, welcome back to the Inner Sanctum Livestream, the place where I show you all of my tricks while I pull them off live right in front of you. Today we're going to be helpfully uh, taking this uh, mix to its final stages because after, before going live, I check a little bit how the sound was behaving and I gotta tell you, we got something quite, quite good already. We got a nice rounded, punchy and quite stable uh, kick drum and bass sound, so all of our low end is working properly. Then uh, I liked quite a lot some of the reverb that we worked on last week uh, on our snare and our uh, general, general uh, drums uh, as a whole. And now we're gonna be tackling our electric guitars and applying a little bit of special effects because the ambience is a little bit lacking. So with that being said, let me introduce you to the fine gentleman behind me. <laughs> Hello there cousin boys, how's it going? Glad to be back, good to have you here as well. So let's get you some mixing. So how do you feel about this set? Are you, are you ready? Is your body ready? Let me think. I'm ready. Good, okay. good, because I'm not. But, <laughs> uh, let's get it on. So let's head over to Logic Pro X. Uh, I'm gonna assume that this is the moment in which I would say welcome back girls and boys to Logic Pro X. In front of us we got the product that we're gonna use to continue with this mess. Sorry, I meant mix. So as a quick uh, reminder, we got here our powerful drum kit already and our bass, guitars, piano, synth and special effects, okay? Simple as that. This is a really, really short uh, mix when it, when it, when it, when, when considering the, the amount of tracks involved. And now I'm gonna press play so we can have an idea of what kind of stuff we're gonna be dealing with. So without further ado, let's listen to some music because I'm starting to get tired of talking. Okay, girls and boys, first thing that I notice, and I would like to hear your uh, opinion regarding what I'm about to uh, tell you. I think the snare is a little bit too loud, a little bit too loud, and uh, it's a little bit overbearingly loud when compared to uh, my main guitar and the kick drum. Usually, I like to have a... the snare should be always a little bit louder than the kick, okay? That's a fact. But in this time, uh, this time around, we got a ridiculously loud to my taste as snare. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna go over to my mixing desk, my mixer, and you should have access to my mixer as well. We're gonna be working with this with this fader, 
and we're going to be moving it up and down. You're also going to have a replica right now in front of your screen of my mixing desk on Logic. That will allow you to see uh, the difference between, not the difference, you're, that will allow you to see how far I'm, I'm going to push it. And as you can see, we already got our snare quite low. Sign that I already felt the same way as I do uh, the last time we were working on this track. So the usual is going to be this. Now I got an idea. I'm going to go all the way down with my feather. And just for just for sake of conversation, I got selected the snare. So that's the, the track they selected, the lead up track is the one that we're going to work on, okay? And I'm going to press play again, but I'm going to go back first to my uh, arrangement window and I'm going to select one of the different uh, sections here, my markers, and I'm going to loop that marker section. Let me see. I think we're going to use the usual first half of the track and then I'm going to go back to my mixer and from there I'm going to start to bring the snare little by little. And one thing is going to happen, you will hear the snare even though we got no snare at all. Why? You should try to find the answer before I explain it to you. Here we go! Okay, girls and boys, you saw that I barely moved the fader. We're still a little bit uh, on the lower uh, 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 end of the uh, power level when, when talking about loudness, and we're already getting a nice and much more rounder sound. But as you might remember, over here on our arrangement window, one of our sections has a little bit more energy on the on the snare, the second half of the precise here, girls. So now let's compare if what I did on my fader, it's actually uh, making sense over here. I'm going to press play again. Here we go. Okay, girls and boys, I feel that it's a little bit too loud to my taste in this section for obvious reasons. The snare itself is louder and this is going to force us to do and get into the dark arts of automation. So for that, we are going to go to our mixer again and we're going to uh, work on my fader. Okay, and this is going to be kind of difficult, girls and boys because uh, we already got way, way, way down in volume our snare. So, I will have to be quite intelligent on how far am I gonna bring the snare down on this particular section. So, for those of you who don't know what automation is, this is one important, so I will have to go bigger. You'll see, automation is, basically speaking, telling Logic to rise the volume or lower the volume of, our, of my fader or any other parameter, including plugins, as the song progresses in time automatically, hence the name automation. And uh, one of the benefits of having access to a control surface such as the one that I have access to here in the studio, it's that I have I can do that hands-on without the need of actually relying on my mouse. Because otherwise, let me show you logic again. This is how it usually fares. If you press A on your keyboard, you'll be granted with this. This is the automation uh, thing, the automation mode of logic. And here you'll see that we got this line, this super, super, uh, super, super dim light line. If I click on it, I'm going to create, it's going to go yellow. And this is because I am now able to create notes. Those notes allow me to do this. And that's, that this means that our fader 
all the way from here to here was at minus 15 dBs, but once it reaches the stage, it starts to go dramatically up. And just as an example, keep an, an open eye over here, okay? And it's moving by itself. Uh, that's because it's following the line here, okay? And you see now that our fader is now at minus 7.6 per uh, dBs. Quite, quite magical, beautiful, and sometimes stunning and brave, but still super, super uh, annoying and difficult to pull off in a really good taste manner. So here's what we're gonna do, girls and boys. Thanks to the fact that I'm using the, the contour surface, I would be able to alter and create an automation line without the need of my mouse by just moving the fader because the automation line is actually gonna fo is gonna follow every single move that I did on my fader. Awesome. So we're gonna do the following. We're gonna go to our mixer and from there I'm gonna see how far am I gonna bring uh, my uh, snare up in volume. Here we go, girls and boys. I like it. Now let's see how it fares uh, on our automation line. Here we go, Wilson boys. Something funny happened. Guess what? I didn't write the automation. Why? I did it on purpose here, believe it or not. Okay. Because I wanted to show you this, Wilson boys. Don't be fooled by this. You have to, even though I turn on the automation mode on Logic, that doesn't mean that my channel is ready to write the automation. How do I know this? Because of this. Look at this. It still says read. What does that mean? That it's gonna read or follow the line that I, that is drawn over there. And look what happens if I move the feather. The entire line moves up and down. Uh, so, how to fix this hideous problem? You can do it in two different two different ways. If you have a, a, a contour surface, you just press the touch uh, button, and automatically it's gonna change. Uh, to touch but let's say that you are not a, a, a fancy kid so you have uh, to do it with your mouse it's simple just go here click on automation and select the different types of automation what's the difference great question read as the name implies means it's gonna read okay touch it's gonna just alter anything you did on your automation and then if you release the fader it's gonna bring back the line to where it was before applying the automation. Great for a correction, okay? If you wanna fix something that you did on your automation. Latch, it's completely different. Latch means that as soon as you move the fader, it's gonna latch to the point in volume that you put the fader there. And it's gonna start to uh, alter everything afterwards, okay? It's kind of self-explanatory, but I hope that it makes sense. Still, I'm gonna do some uh, some examples right now, so you can have the you can see exactly what happens. And my hair is kind of crazy. So, first, let's try out touch. Here we go. Now that my uh, my uh, logic session is expecting my fader to write, because I will explain to you why write is also an option, but it's write quote unquote. Okay, it's expecting me to write down some automation. I'm gonna press play and you'll see that the yellow line is gonna to start to move around. Okay, you saw that now that I have selected touch, every time that I release the fader, the line was brought back to the original starting point. Now let's see what happens if I select latch. So I'm gonna do the, th the same thing. I'm gonna now I'm, I did it on my control surface. So Tiago, if it's possible for you to put the control surface on the screen, please. I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna make sure that it, it doesn't get in the way. So okay. you will see now how my movement it's gonna be replicated. The movement of my finger on my control surface is gonna be replicated on a uh, logic. So hopefully, is it ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here we go, Gerson boys. Now I'm going to do latch and see what's going to happen. Do 
you got the idea, right? Now, what's the whole point of this? This is going to be an, a quite interesting exercise because the the snare in this section is kind of all over the place uh, when it comes to dynamic range. See how different each of these hits is when compared to the rest. It's not necessarily speaking a bad thing. And we already at, uh, uh, assessed this issue by compressing. But I don't want to make my snare sound to be to sound overly compressed. The way to solve this problem is going to be by riding totally the proper term. This is not me coming up with it. Riding the fader. And we're going to start to apply different levels of intensity to our uh, volume as the song continues. And to be precise, as the snare performance continues. Here's the big one, Gross and Boys. How far, how low, how high do you have to push the fader? It's a matter of taste, and taste is what actually uh, is the most difficult thing to develop in this kind of uh, business. So I'm gonna try to show you uh, and explain to you why my decisions are gonna uh, be applied to this automation. And you will understand why I refer always to this as the dark arts. So let's first set it to touch because I'm gonna start to move around my fader. You know what, first I'm gonna set it to latch. Why? I'm gonna first establish a volume on which I feel that the snare works as a whole and then I'm gonna set it to touch so I can alter the individual hits that I find to be a little bit offensive okay in volume so here we go hopefully you got it Good. I think that this minus 15.3, it's a great starting point for most of the performance. So what I did is just using my mouse, I just dragged it, dragged the ball all the way to the beginning of this of this section. Uh, and that means that my starting point is going to begin at minus 15. And let me confirm now that the whole region is following the same. Good. So everything is at minus 15.3. Then. Here is going to be an interesting thing. We're going to switch now to touch and we are going to do the following. You can see that there are some extremely high uh, in volume uh, hits such as this guy, this guy and so on and so forth. You see that this is kind of a, 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 a pattern. Why? Because this is actually coming out of a drum machine. So we are going to start to write our fader trying to bring down those snares to a point on which they don't feel out of the rest of the performance wh while preserving the difference in dynamics and volume. Hard, but it's possible. Here we go. This is going to be tricky for some boys because since it, this is the first hit here, we got to be quite, quite intelligent. I think that I'm going to go all the way here so I can bring up the fader little by little. And since my uh, automation mode is set to touch, I don't have to be worried about ruining the, ruining the rest of the performance. So I'm going to press play and I'm going to try to find the sweet spot. So this might get a little bit repetitive for some boys because I'm going to be coming back and forth just to catch that snare. Here we go. Okay, that doesn't sound as offensive as I thought. Now let's see what happens with the rest. Questions? Are you getting this, Diego? Um. I have to say that my focus is, is kind of in the transmission now, so I wasn't really paying full attention, if I'm being honest. No problem. <laughs> Look, here's the thing, Gerson boys. You saw that I just let the song roll without making any form of change. 
it's applying any form of changes to any other different hits. I just focused right now on the highest uh, in volume or loudest uh, snares. So far, we got we have got two, and there is a fifth, a, a, a third one, and four and five, I think. So we're gonna continue, and now we're gonna be catching those uh, super high punchy, loudest uh, stuff uh, snares, and then I'm gonna address the rest. Here we go. Here's an issue, Grosso Mois. Here, you can see that for whatever reason, my fader went all the way down. So I'm gonna just confirm that my automation line is following the loudness that I want to, that I want it to follow. And as we stated, we're gonna keep our faders to follow uh, 15, minus 15.3, okay? There is. I'm gonna press play again, but I'm gonna remove my cycling section because I, I already uh, controlled the first uh, section of our snare. I like it. Now let's compare, sorry about this horrible line, let's compare how our snare is behaving uh, at, the very f at the very beginning of our track. Obviously it's extremely low in volume because I lowered it while we were messing around with the concept. I think that we found this this part to be uh, effective at minus 16 or something like minus that. Minus 15 if minus I can 15. recall yeah, correctly. You are correct. Let's see. Good. Here is what I want you to pay attention to, Gerson Bush. I'm going to press play, but before we do, I want you to understand and focus on this. You can see that the whole um, re visual representation of our snare is extremely uh, controlled because remember, we chop some of the highest uh, in volume sections and we lower the gain on those as a way to control the snare behavior. It's completely different for, from what I did over here, Gerson, because in here, we are just lowering the output. That, that's something important to keep in mind. Why? Because when you lower the gain, how loud this signal is, you are changing the way that your plugins are going to be reacting to the input of that sound. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, the difference with this is that when you alter the volume, as I did over here, girls and boys, what we do get is actually altering the volume, the output volume of the snare. Hopefully that makes sense, girls and boys. So I'm gonna press play again, and we're gonna uh, now see if our two sections, snare-wise, work in tandem, okay? Here we go. I like hey. quite a lot how that section works sounds. See. Now let's go to the loudest part see. and see if it people. correlates. <laughs> I'm gonna press play oh, no, no. and keep track of how the snare sounds in volume.
So it works, girls and boys. I like it quite a lot. I find the snare to be finally balanced in volume and it makes sense as a piece. Now, we got our snare controlled. One thing for you to remember. Right now, my fader is still behaving as a touch, okay? If I leave it as it is, every time I press play and I want to see uh, something with the fader, for example, I, I want to try a different volume just for the lulls, you're actually going to keep writing automation information on the automation line. Not a good idea. That's why you have to go to your controller surface and press the read button or go straight to your Logic Pro X uh, project and select read. That makes sure that whatever you do is not going to affect the uh, actual uh, automation line. Important. Now, let's take a look at our guitars. I'm going to uh, remove the automation uh, mode by pressing A on my keyboard. And from here, we are going to take a look at two different uh, elements uh, guitar-wise. We got a lead guitar over here, girls and boys, and two rhythmic guitars. My usual approach is first dealing with harmony and then with melody. Why? Because melody should... Uh, harmony is like the backdrop of the scene. As usual, I try to use this, this uh, uh, movie's analogy. It's the setup of the scene, the, the, the backdrop, the background music, the the even the props okay and the melody is the actors performing without a proper setting the actors performance will be completely devoid of any reason okay so we're gonna go to the next section girls and boys to where my melody my harmony guitars are playing and i'm gonna mute my lead okay from here i'm gonna solo both those both guitars and see what they are doing Those guitars sound incredible. <laughs> I love it. Don't remember what kind of amplifier I used, but I, if I think, uh, if I remember uh, kind of incorrectly, I think it was a Mesa Boogie. Uh, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, the clean channel of a Mesa Boogie is something to be actually proud of. Now, even though it's a clean guitar, I want to add a little bit of distortion. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to apply harmonic distortion to the overall guitar uh, summing track. So we're going to hit head over here to distortion and I'm going to apply um, Big All just for the lulls. This is a really, really subtle yet uh, present uh, uh, or harmonic distortion circuit. Let's see what we can do with it. Did you get the difference, Diego? Yes. Can you explain to the girls and the boys what on earth happened? I can't actually find the the, the detailed version or technical version. To me, the sound felt richer. Yes. If I can even put it. No, in yeah, yeah. Place. Actually, actually, I was about to say that it <laughs> felt it felt richer, fuller. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now you understand why I love distortion. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, we're talking about uh, the beauty of sound, so it's hard to actually find the proper words. Yeah, it's for difficult it. to describe it with words. Yeah, but, but well, <laughs> I, I think it was so obvious. The difference yeah. is quite clear. The now, big, yeah. why did that happen, girls and boys? That's a real question. I'm glad you didn't ask. This is the result of something known as harmonic distortion, and that means that you are creating uh, subdivisions of the fundamental frequency, which creates a much lusher and uh, prettier sounds as somebody uh, once have said before it embiggens the sound okay <laughs> proper <laughs> english proper english proper <laughs> english of course and you saw that i just drive the drive knob the drive knob uh, all the way to the top why because i wanted to see how far can i push it and what would happen if i push it that way then i back it off and until i got the sweet spot as simple as that now let's bring the rest of the mix and see how this thing first with the rest of the mix.
We got a problem, girls and boys. The dynamics of those guitars are all over the place. And we need to apply some compression. We will have to hit our trusty SL console again. And I'm going to bring the, the, the... No, we're not going to use the mixer right now. We're going to just find first our uh, SL plugin, which is Guitar L. So there you got it in front of you, girls and boys. So you should be able to see exactly uh, what I'm going to be doing on the surface. We're going to first select the routing of our uh, console to be the following. We're going to set our input to hit first the dynamic section of our uh, interface, or, or uh, sorry, uh, of our console here. I want you to pay attention to this section, okay, girls and boys? The signal flow, it's going downwards, okay? So I set it to work first on the dynamics, which is the compressor and, 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 and gate expander. Then it's going to hit my EQ, and then it's going to hit the filter as the final stage. Useful, because what I want to do with this is I'm going to control the dynamics of the different uh, chords, because as you can see here, it's obvious, right? <laughs> it's quite clear that we got a gigantic big chongus in the middle of amidst uh, a, a, a bunch of regular uh, sized dudes. So we're going to control the big chongus while also making our regular sized dudes, dudes uh, uh, sound uh, a little bit louder giving us the impression or illusion of everything being uh, controlled, okay? Here we go, girls and boys. I'm going to solo my guitar, and right now it's fully panned to the left. I'm going to center it, and then I'm going to solo the guitar. Why? Because since we're going to be applying a, a compression, it's better to have a full understanding of what's going on. So I'm going to press play and focus on the sound of our guitar and how it's going to start to be a little bit more squashed. Here we go. Okay, girls and boys, I think we got something quite, quite cool and stable. Let me uh, try to see if it's possible uh, for you to hear my voice correctly. I hope that this is working because it seems that there was something going on with the voice. Let's see this. It's still wrong. How does it sound like? How does it sound like, Diego? Okay, I can't describe it. Okay. Uh, is it wordly? Is it, uh, is it not uh, loud? No. It the, 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 the signal is coming in the healthy strength, but it's sounding weird. It's not. It's thin. It's. Okay, let me see. Let Give me a see. second. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay, how is it now? Is it working better? Talk. Talking, 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 talking. Okay, no, it's weird. Now let me tell me if it's working correctly. Is it working correctly? No. Yes. Better, I think. Acceptable or better? No, it's good. Good? Good. Perfect. Fixed. Okay. Now, coming back to what I was saying, Gerson, we're sorry about that, but again, when you go live, you have to sort with all of those issues. Now, here we go, Gerson, what I'm going to be doing now, it's um, we uh, already hit our dynamics in a way that it's actually squashing the sound of our guitar a tiny bit and giving us a fuller sound. I want you to pay attention to how the release tail is going to sound like, okay? Here we go. Hopefully you got it, girls and boys. As soon as I turn off the compressor, you got uh, the kind of the release tail of the beautiful reverb uh, uh, that I applied to that guitar uh, goes away. But once I turn on the compressor, magic happens. So now I'm going to send it back all the way to the left again. And now I'm going to work on the second guitar, girls and boys. I'm going to center it and we're going to do the, the, the same thing. We're going to change the position of our uh, 
uh, whole uh, channel strip to follow the same principle dynamics and EQ and then filter okay and focus on the dynamics region which is this whole area damn it this whole area okay and we're going to be focusing particularly speaking over here here we go We got a tiny bump in volume, but not that bad. Now I'm gonna mess around with the release, this guy, because I wanna see if we can extend the tail even further by keeping the, the whole signal compressed by, uh, longer. Here we go. Okay, girls and boys, we got something quite useful, so I'm gonna move it to the right again, and we're gonna listen to both of them together, just to confirm that we got a control signal, and from there, we're gonna bring it with the rest of the mix. Working like a charm. So I'm gonna remove the solo, and then I lower the, the fader down. We're gonna go to our mixer now, okay? So, in our mixer, I will be bringing these two guys, little by little, as soon as... Uh, just to find the sweet spot, okay? So here we go, Grosomo. Like it, like it quite a lot. Now, it feels a little bit too dry to my taste. I'm gonna go back to uh, the interface. No, wait a second, no, let's stay there. We're gonna go back to our mixer, and now I'm gonna insert a little bit of uh, reverb to our uh, guitars. As you can see here, girls and boys, over here, we got our uh, main guitar bus, and it already has a hole and plate sent, which are exactly the same that we the same that we used on our snare and kick, uh, snare and, and 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 drums in general. I feel inclined to add a little bit of loose, but to be quite frank with you, I want to create an atmosphere out of those guitars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first apply just a tiny bit of the hole and the plate reverb, the general one, and then I'm going to apply an extra reverb circuit exclusive to the guitars. Here we go, girls and boys. Nice. It's feeling a little bit more uh, surrounding, if that makes sense to you, or some more spacious. It's spacious, yes. A little bit more, yeah. Space, it's, yeah. You know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A little bit more, yeah, yeah. More like sound design, uh, no, sound escaping. Now, I want it to be a little bit more interesting, so I'm gonna select both of my uh, guitars and I'm gonna send them to F up. No, we're gonna send them, send them to another reverb uh, um, is a, a bus that I already got. I'm trying to think which to use, girls and boys, because I am lazy to create a new one. So we're gonna do the, you're gonna use the T verb, which is actually a reverb circuit that I have for my thumbs. But since we're not using it right now, we're gonna apply it. Right now it has the powerful mm, little plate. Let's see how it first. Let's go back to our our guitars. I'm gonna solo them because the idea is to see if it works. 
and we're gonna start to add the reverb little by little. Here we go, with some voice. Kinda like it, girls and boys, but it should be larger than life. So I'm gonna go to infinity. No, that, that would be way too much. And I'm gonna insert the moth, which is gonna add a little bit of modulation to the reverb. And I'm gonna apply a gentle amount, well, not a gentle, a, a copious amount of low cut. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, that was cool. <laughs> of course, this is kind of ridiculous. But let's do something even cooler, girls and boys. Let's turn this into a shimmer, reverb. Let me find my thumb, reverb, and then here I'm gonna insert a pitch uh, effect, and we're gonna use um, micro shift, just because like just because we can. Now this is not the one. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that, uh, machine gun. Sometimes uh, people get a little bit uh, nuts in this in this area. Uh, Alter Boy is the one that we're looking for. Here it is. Here it is, in all its glory. We are gonna set it to fully wet and let's see what happens. Weird, I know, yeah. but we are testing waters yeah, so right now. Kind of haunting, kind of as an yeah. underlayer. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going a little bit too ha too too crazy on the decay on our plate. I'm gonna back it off a tiny bit because it's extremely long, but it's kind of covering, and we might need to address that once we bring back the rest of the instruments. Let me uh, clear out this guy, take it out of this uh, the, the, our visual range, and what we're doing with the Alter Boy, it's kind of working, but I don't know. Don't know. Let me press play again. Mm, no, I don't like it. It's creating those weird artifacts. Not, no, not exactly what I was looking for. Let's try something different. Let's apply. Uh, this guy I've never used it before. <laughs> yes, it's morphing. Let's see what it does first. Let's confirm that it's fully wet, and let's see if. Pitch facts. Uh, octave up. Let's see. No, it kind of already worked, but in a weird way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see how it first with the rest. <laughs> that was like a happy accident. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna on solo. Here we go, Grissom boys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll do it now. Yes, it's kind of. 
Sorry? Keep going there. I'll yeah, there. no, no, no. Sorry about that, Gerson boys. This broadcast has been full of uh, problems. But look, what I'm doing right now is getting pissed by this phone. No, 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 yeah. Done. Now, uh, look, here's the deal, Gerson boys. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the volume all the way down off my uh, reverb and I'm going to add it little by little, Gerson boys, okay? Because the idea is to find the sweet spot. It's weird. But it works. It's adding a nice layer of texture to the overall sound. I'm going to press play again and we're going to start to add the the reverb into it little by little. Here we go. Guys. Nice. I like it quite a lot, girls and boys. Let's see uh, now what to do with our lead guitar. Coming back to the Ranger window, I'm going to unmute the, the electric guitar and uh, I'm going to bring it little by little all the way up. Okay, here we go. Nice. <laughs> I quite like this effect. Okay. We're basically coming to the end of this live stream, girls and boys. So what I'm going to do is let's compare our mix. What we got right now with what we had at the beginning. Because before we went live, I actually created a new render of this track. Uh, and I ins uh, now it's part of my uh, comparison uh, or reference uh, plugin. Okay. So we're going to be referencing to the original starting point. So I'm going to press play from the top, girls and boys. So we are going to be switching back and forth. So for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the concept behind this plugin, whenever it's blue, it's what we've been working on for the last few uh, minutes. When it's orange, it's the previous original track, okay? The beginning of this live stream. So let's compare. Here we go.
Okay. The difference is really quite, quite clear. We got the uh, snare that it's finally feeling at home. It's no longer jumping out of our mix. We got a cool as F final section, girls and boys, thanks to the added effect that we applied on our guitars. And that effect was incredibly, incredibly uh, meaningful to the track because it feels better, doesn't it? <laughs> it does completely. And uh, you, uh, um, the whole feel of the of the track was improved by orders of magnitude. Yes. Because you, even though you didn't tackle too many issues, you made the whole thing sound, uh, for the lack of a better word, in big end. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds larger. It sounds uh, a little bit bolsier. And also... And more interesting as well. Interesting. The, the, exactly. the thing with the guitars made the whole sound a lot more interesting. Yes. 100%. Also, uh, remember, girls and boys, the idea behind the ambience it's not necessarily <laughs> speaking being louder okay it's about uh, getting the proper um, emotional impact to be portrayed by the track to actually enact that feel and by applying these effects we're actually creating this kind of ambient uh, oriented a little bit melancholic sounding track with uh, that cool factor that it's quite quite uh, Remarkable, and to be quite frank, I like quite a lot. So I hope that you got something out of this live stream, girls and boys. I know that it was a little bit accidented. It wasn't uh, as, as, as smooth as usual, but we managed to pull it out, pull it off at the end. And also the quality of the stuff that actually we did, I, I am quite impressed. Out of all of the different uh, live streams that we had done so far on this mix, I think this session was the most uh, important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> out of the bunch, for real. Because we established finally the emotional uh, impact of the song as it should be. Next week, we should put an end to this uh, track because I'm starting to get uh, uh, tired of it. And also because we've got plenty of other tracks that I would like to address with you, girls and boys. So, as usual, the first thing that I want to do before we go is to invite you to follow us on social media such as Instagram or f Twitter because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us on a much more personal basis. And also, if you want to support this channel even further, the best way to do it is by listening to our music on Apple Music or Spotify. So, girls and boys, as every single time that I meet you and we ever meet you, I gotta remind yeah. you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that we will see you when we see you.